ancient travellers left behind their golden travel accounts in the form of travelogues for the future generations to read, learn and delight. We bring those to you in our audio series, Travelogues in Time. In today's edition, we have India as depicted in the travel accounts of Nicola Manushi, the Venetian traveller from Italy. The script is by Professor Pius Malekandathil, Professor Centre of Historical Studies, JNU, and presented by Abhay Rajdat. Nicola Manucci, who wrote Storia de Magor or History of the Mughals, was a native of Venice and he visited India at a time when it was undergoing considerable socio-economic and political transformation. His work that gives a vivid eyewitness account of India in the second half of the 17th century is based on the meticulous observations that Manucci made while traveling throughout India initially as the head of the artillery of the Mughals and later of Raja Jai Singh of Ambar. Occasionally, he served as a physician as well. He also played the role of an ambassador negotiating with Sambhaji for the Portuguese of Goa and later he was deputed for dialogue with the Mughals for the English in Madras. During the last phase of his life, we find him in Pondicherry attending to the affairs of the French. However, he breathed his last in Madras where the English had granted him in perpetuity leasehold house and garden in recognition of his services. Just like Manucci, his account written partially in French, Italian and Portuguese also travelled a lot as manuscript wandering through different terrains from India to France, Italy, Holland, England and finally Germany, where it took the formal shape of a book. In 1705, when the French historian François Catrao wrote the general history of Mughal Empire, he included a considerable part of Manucci's work in it. The first English translation of Manucci's work was made by William Iveen in 1907. Nicola Manucci was born in 1639 in Venice and reached India in 1656. He ran away from home in 1653 and hid on board a vessel that was bound for Simarera. In the ship he met Lord Henry Bard Belmont who was fleeting from England and going to Turkey, Persia and India through land route to escape from the death threats from Cromwell for having sided with the English King Charles II. Lord Bellomont took Manucci into his service. Travelling through the caravan route via Isfahan, Shiraz, Lar and Bandar Abbas, they reached Surat in January 1656. After having spent 75 days in Surat, they continued their journey to Agra via Burhanpur, Handia, Sironj, Narwar, Gwalior and Dholpur. Though they still continued their journey towards Delhi, Lord Bellomont died on the way at Hodal, located between Mathura and Delhi. The eventual dispute that arose between Manucci and two other Englishmen over the wealth of Bellomont and that of Malucci took him to the Mughal court of Delhi, where Manucci was introduced to Dara Sukhov by a Frenchman employed in his artillery. Manucci was well received by Dara Sukhov, who gave him a good horse and took him as an artillery man in his service with a salary of rupees 80 per month. He speaks of the honorable position that the European artillery men enjoyed in Mughal service, particularly under Dara Sukhov. However, later Aurangzeb reduced much of their privileges and put them to do sentry duty because of their drunkenness. Though Manucci gives an extensive account of the Mughals, some of his details for the period before 1617 are said to be based on bazaar gossips. Manucci's narrative gives a detailed information about the sack of Hooghly, the urban features of Shah Janabad, the character of Shah Jahan, that of Aurangzeb and his brothers, the nature of rapport between Dara Sukho and the various Europeans, the extensive but secretive use of various types of poison by rulers to do away with their political opponents and potential threats, 
and the complex nature of power contestations that appeared in Mughal household by mid 17th century etc. With the illness of Shah Jahan in 1657, his children started mobilizing forces to capture power either individually or by forming alliances. Though Shah Jahan preferred Dara Sukho, his other ambitious children took up arms for grabbing power. In the battle with Aurangzeb and Murad Baksh in 1658, Manuchi fought for Dara Sukho and the detailed picture of what he saw in the war front is given in the first volume of his account. He says how the treachery and desertion of once most trusted Khaliolan Khan and his 5,000 horsemen from Dara's side to Aurangzeb's camp changed the course of war. And when Dara Sukho was defeated in the battle, Manuchi also fled along with others. However, shortly he went in disguise to join Aurangzeb's army and participated in his military move to capture Murad Baksh. In fact, Manuchi did not like Aurangzeb and hence he got away from Delhi and joined Dara Sukho, who was there then in Lahore. Dara placed Manuchi at the head of the artillery of Bakar Fortress, but he retreated to Delhi shortly when the course of events took a negative turn with the death of Dara Sukho. In Delhi, being impressed by the fidelity and valor with which Manuchi served Dara, Aurangzeb requested Manuchi and also other Europeans to enter his service with a remuneration of 5 rupees per day, but he refused the offer saying that he would like to return to his native land. Manuchi was an admirer of what Dara Sukho upheld and represented and in the first volume the author looks at Aurangzeb principally in the way he emerged as the undisputed master of the empire at the cost of the lives of so many of his subjects and the blood of his brothers. You just heard the travel accounts of Nicola Manucci, the Venetian traveler from Italy. The script was written by Professor Pius Malekandithil, Center for Historical Studies, and presented by Abhay Rajdat. Travelogues in time. Travelogues in time.